Hi, my name is Jean and I work for Counseling Services. And today I'd like to talk with you about the concept of self-compassion, actually giving yourself a break. And I feel like this topic is really timely right now as we all deal with these challenging and uncertain times together. And so what is self-compassion? Now the definition offered here on the slide comes from Dr. Kristen Neff, who's one of the leading experts in this field of study and research, along with Dr. Chris Germer, and I'll use both as a resource throughout this short presentation. But self-compassion, as she describes it here, is essentially the practice of goodwill. So not good feelings per se, but applying goodwill towards yourself when you're faced uh, with a moment of suffering or distress, and keeping in mind that this is part of our shared human experience. So when you think about self-compassion and the definition here, how self-compassionate do you feel like you are? Or do you tend to be more critical or harsh or judgmental when you're dealing with a mistake before you? This is very important to think about because there's a connection between how self-compassionate you are and greater overall well-being. And so Dr. Neff identifies three key components of self-compassion as she describes it here. The first is self-kindness versus self-judgment. And so that's just as it sounds here. So when you're dealing with imperfections or that sense that you can't always get what you want, you really apply more understanding, more care, and less punishment towards yourself. The second one, uh, which I feel like is almost the most important one, is a sense of common humanity versus isolation. And I also feel like this really highlights the difference between, say, self-pity, self-indulgence, and self-compassion. Because when we're in a more pity state, we tend to be very self-absorbed, uh, have that mindset, why me, why me, and then we're very alone. Whereas you, if you adopt a more self-compassionate approach, uh, you recognize that we all have unflattering traits. We all have regretted actions. We all make mistakes. We all have failed relationships. And this is part of being human. Dr. Neff uh, often says that there are so many things in life that go wrong, uh, that go very, very bad, but this is also very normal. And then the reality is that things do get better again and then go back again. And this is the natural ebb and flow of our human experience. The third component is mindfulness. So this essentially is observing without judgment your negative thoughts and feelings, you know, really getting some understanding of it. Uh, I think there's a tendency when you have a problem or are faced with dist distress, you rush to fix it and or numb out, you know, by maybe engaging in substances or uh, overeating or denying or avoiding. Dr. Neff talks about it's really hard to be compassionate towards yourself if you don't understand your suffering. And so mindfulness will help you uh, get an understanding of what you're going through and also help you widen your perspective. Because when we overly attach and identify with our negative emotions and thoughts, we tend to overreact, and that can create more problems. Again, with a more uh, mindful approach, you'll have a better outcome. And so there's been a lot of promising research on self-compassion and uh, positive results, like leading to increased life satisfaction, better relationships, uh, increased motivation, more productivity. I chose to simply put up here that self-compassion leads to decreased stress. And so you, if you look at the slide here, you know, harsh self-criticism typically elevates the stress hormones. And that sting, as it says here, of self-criticism can be so intense that you become less resilient. You don't learn in the face of a mistake or a failure. Whereas a more self-compassionate mindset um, can really activate that soothing system, that part of our emotional regulation system that elicits greater care, greater sense of well-being. And so again, very important and promising research here around the impact on greater overall well-being. 
And so some tips for practice, you know, try self-compassion through touch. Like even in a moment of distress, just placing your hand on your heart or on your cheek will take things down a notch. You know, mindfulness practice, any form really, but I'm going to uh, mention the self-compassion break here. Both Germer and Neff have audio meditations on their website, and they're like six or seven minutes, but they describe, describe taking a self-compassion break, and they're really wonderful. Think of your compassionate responses to others and try to apply them to yourself. That can be very helpful. Explore self-compassion through writing, you know, in a journal. Change your inner critic. Identify what you truly want. And keep in mind that this too shall pass. And so here are these references and resources. I have both Neff and Germer's websites there if you want to learn more about self-compassion. And then this last slide is information about us on campus, how to get in touch with counseling services if you want some help around being more self-compassionate or really any other problem area you might be having. We're always happy to see you. So thanks very much for listening and take care.